Welcome to Coffee with Saul. I'm Saul Green, a Medical Affairs Director at IDS. I've collaborated with clinical laboratories all over the world, in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, North America, and Latin America. Why is the pre-analytical phase of laboratory testing so crucial? The pre-analytical phase of laboratory testing is crucial. If we consider the total testing process can be subdivided into three phases. The pre-analytical, which is the test request, patient and specimen identification, specimen collection, the specimen transport, accessioning, and even specimen processing. Whereas the analytical phase is really the specimen testing itself. The post-analytical phase is reporting the results, the interpretation, follow-up storage of the specimens, and retesting if needed. So the pre-analytical phase is the most complex. It typically takes the most time, involves the most number of people, including nurses, phlebotomists, laboratory staff, etc. So it's not surprising that it's the, the most errors occur in the pre-analytical phase. One estimate has shown that an average 650-bed hospital spends an estimated $1.2 million uh, annually due to the pre-analytical pre errors. And the burden goes beyond the dollar value. Patients' life and trust of the healthcare system are at stake. They're in the hands of our laboratorians and our nurses. What is good blood specimen collection from a nursing perspective? Nurses want patients to have healthy and visible veins where the blood will have good flow. The needle goes right in, the vein doesn't roll, and most of all, it doesn't hit a valve. In the end, nurses want the blood to flow seamlessly into the blood collection tube and give us sufficient volume for the sample. Nurses' thoughts and concerns are about not having a second stick, especially for patients who are difficult to draw to blood. Their focus is overall on the patient's experience. What is good blood specimen collection from a laboratory perspective? Laboratorians are focused on the overall quality of the specimen and they're responsible for diagnostic accuracy. Their thinking process is more analytical. They're trained in quality control to ensure accurate results are reported. For blood specimens, they're looking for the right sample ID. They're looking for sufficient sample volume for analysis, so no QNS for the analyzer. That means quantity not sufficient. No hemolysis, no flags in the system, good quality overall. Beyond that, since most specimens are collected in evacuated tubes and with an additive inside, they also want to make sure that the tube is correctly filled to support accurate blood to additive ratio so that accurate results can be obtained. Remember to always check expiration dates of your tubes and like the selection of your analyzer and your assay, the correct tube selection is also very important. Can nurses and laboratorians have different perspectives? Nurses and laboratorians have different perspectives. Nurses focus on patient care, but they're not always given enough feedback on exactly what happens after the specimen is collected. Laboratorians focus on specimen quality and diagnostic accuracy, but they don't always have direct interaction with the patients. Often getting a high quality sample can be challenging given some patients' conditions. Such differences in perspective may cause inefficiency and eventually high cost. For example, there can be problems when a poor quality sample gets rejected. In this case, as we previously discussed, nurses, they're concerned about redrawer and what that means to the, the discomfort of the patient. The labs are upset because of time and money that's wasted. Physicians may need to wait longer for lab results, causing a domino effect of inefficiency. And that's why nurses and laboratorians should work together. How can nurses and laboratorians work together? Mechanisms can be put in place. For example, I've worked with many hospitals to assemble a pre-analytical team, which includes stakeholders such as nurses, laboratorians, and sometimes upper management. The team will start with establishing a baseline of key performance indicators, such as sample rejection rate or hemolysis rate. Then they examine the system by key clinical units, so looking at the ED or ICU, to identify areas for improvement. 
they can make improvements and then expand the scope to other units in the hospital. The key here is really to get the nurses and the laboratorians together so that they each see each other's perspective and share responsibility so continu continuous improvement can be made throughout the hospitals or, or the medical institution. Additionally, we can bring physicians into the conversation so they can provide counsel on next steps based on the information that they receive from the laboratory, but also clinical information uh, from nurses about the patient's condition.